Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NEFIO Overview Webinar. My colleague and I will walk you through what is NEFIO and a demo of, of NEFIO as well. I am Amar Kapadia. I'm co-founder at Arna Networks. Sandeep. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sandeep. I am the principal architect at Arna Networks, and I am also uh, part of the uh, NEFIO TSC. All right, so let's talk about challenges at the edge. If you look at edge, edge workload, orchestration and management presents new challenges. And by edge workload, we mean the network service or an edge native application. And the challenges that we see are, one is the scale. You could have tens of thousands of edge sites with hundreds of workloads. The second is infrastructure dependency. So interestingly, with the cloud, we try to decouple ourselves from the infrastructure. Now, as we go back to the edge, we are finding that it's not so easy to decouple. And workloads have specific requirements, meaning that the infrastructure has to be orchestrated first that meets the requirements of the workload. And then you can orchestrate the workload, whether it be a network service or an edge native application. And the third is heterogeneity. Um, you have very different types of edge clusters, different storage, different compute, different Kubernetes flavors, different networking providers. And when it comes to the workload, there is no shortage of a variety of different network services and edge computing applications. So these are some big challenges in terms of um, having the edge be successful. Now, what if we could use Kubernetes to solve this problem? And the answer is you actually can. What was not known to me is that Kubernetes is a control plane that can do more than container orchestration. I had always assumed that you know, that's what Kubernetes was for, but actually it's a general purpose control plane and container orchestration was just the first one. And we'll talk about how Kubernetes can be used to solve the edge orchestration and management problems that I just outlined. All right, so introducing Nephew. Nephew is a new Linux Foundation open source project. It is seeded by Google. It, uh, it has been around for just a few months. The first developer summit happened in June of this year. It is Kubernetes based, 100% Kubernetes based, intent driven, orchestration and management framework for network services, edge computing applications, and the underlying infrastructure. Uh, and that, in a sense, addresses the challenge that I mentioned completely. It is multi-vendor, cloud and edge uh, infra-oriented, so you can orchestrate uh, edge and cloud infrastructure across multiple vendors. You can orchestrate network functions and edge native applications. And finally, after you orchestrate these different things, you can handle the configuration management and ongoing lifecycle management as well. So why Nephew? Um, there are other solutions out there. I would say the biggest reason for Nephew is the scale. When you look at um, tens of thousands of sites, tens of infrastructure providers, hundreds of workloads, this is a scale we have not seen before. And because of that, you need a new solution. And that's where Nephew comes in. It's suitable for multiple sites. It's intent driven. And that again helps with scalability. And there is constant reconciliation of state. Um, if you're just a few sites, you can manually reconcile. But at this scale, you have to have constant automated reconciliation. And day one, day two is also taken care of by the same mechanism, uh, which lends itself to scalability. You have CI, CD baked in, as you will see. It goes all the way from infrastructure to workload. So on-demand distributed clouds, and it's suitable for infrastructure and workloads. And finally, it's heterogeneous. So it's meant for multi-vendor environments. It can handle public and private clouds. It can handle a variety of third-party network functions and edge native applications. 
What type of problems can Nephew solve? These are just three examples. There are, you know, there's no limit to what type of edge applications you can use uh, Nephew for. The first one is multi-vendor edge services brokering. Here at Telco may want to be the single point of contact for enterprises and provide them edge from different vendors as per their need. For example, if somebody says, I want an edge that is five milliseconds from such and such a location, it automatically, the, the telco automatically finds the right edge, provides it, and uh, essentially provides a brokering service. The second is multi-access edge computing. Um, this is for just any general purpose edge computing application. And the third is for 5G network services, for example, Open RAN. The Nephew architecture at a very, very high level is as follows. You first state your intent. Everything is declarative and intent driven. So the intent explains uh, to Nephew what the infrastructure requirements are, what were the network function or edge native application requirements are, and on top of that, the network service or the composite application. Then based on the intent, the orchestration happens, you validate the intent and then you deploy it. And that goes into a, a control loop where you're constantly monitoring the application and then reconciling the state. So this makes sure that there is no configuration drift. And it's also useful for day one, day two configuration where you may change your intent and it's automatically reflected on the workload. Um, I'm going to be very quick here. Um, Nephew extends Kubernetes. It has three pillars, each one based on custom resource definitions, which is a way to extend Kubernetes APIs. And under a CRD, you have operators. The three pillars for operators are cloud infra, where you orchestrate the cloud infrastructure itself, cloud and edge, workload resource automation, where you orchestrate network services and edge computing applications, and then workload configuration. So these are the three pillars that, uh, that Nephew is addressing. And the three key principles, I won't go into them, are intent-based automation, it's all based on intent, uh, we looked at one example. You can see another example here. Declarative configuration. It's very uh, important in Nephew to be declarative and not have any imperative um, information in the intent. So in fact, it's called configuration as data and non-complex. So very simple Kubernetes cloud native principles are very simple. And those are the ones that are being used. Um, CICD is automatically baked in. Uh, Sandeep will hint at this. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Sandeep, to walk through the demo. Sure. Okay, so in this uh, demonstration, what we are going to show is the orchestration of the uh, infrastructure. And then the automation, which basically prepares that infrastructure for the workload uh, uh, workload deployment. Followed by that, we are going to orchestrate workload. And workload in our case is a caching DNS application. So we will see how the placement intent uh, that is specified during the workload uh, orchestration selects the cluster uh, which are created, uh, clusters which are created by the, uh, the, the infra automation that we are going to show. Uh, followed by that, there will be uh, there is an example of day zero configuration uh, of the caching DNS application. So in this specific use case, uh, the configuration will be based on the cluster type. So the controller is basically going to uh, look at the type of the cluster, and then uh, based on that, it will configure the scaling profile uh, in the application uh, dynamically, and then it will basically deploy the curated package to the uh, target infra. So this, uh, so this is a very high level diagram of uh, the Nephew platform and uh, the three edge clusters. So what we see in the Nephew platform are primarily uh, two kinds of clusters. 
one is the workload cluster and another is the uh, infrastructure uh, one is the uh, workload controller and another is the infrastructure controller the infrastructure controller underneath is going to use uh, the uh, the cross plane and we are going to orchestrate eks cluster and uh, the uh, the the nephew control uh, controller node also has the config sync as a component and config sync is basically the uh, gitops tool here and config sync's job is to sync uh, the packages from the git repos to which it is uh, pointing to and porch is the uh, porch is the uh, uh, manager for the uh, kpt packages so basically what we have to do is we have to register the uh, git repositories with the porch and porch automatically discovers all the packages that are present in these uh, git repositories and porch then provisions uh, the users to basically download these packages perform mutations and uh, upload these packages uh, upload the curated packages to the target repos in this example there is uh, there is a repo associated with every cluster and the config syncs in these clusters are configured to sync the packages that are uploaded to these uh, to their corresponding uh, uh, repos and then uh, along with that we have an infra repo uh, infra repo is supposed to contain the infrastructure related packages so in our example the infra repo will have the uh, uh, the kpt package which has the cross plane krm uh, objects and uh, and then there is uh, there is a repo which is which has the nephew packages itself which are basically these uh, the controllers that we see uh, the config sync and porch and then private catalog packages contain the raw packages raw workload packages yeah so so this is this slide basically describes the all the components uh, that are part of this demo so this slide uh, shows uh, the the concept of intents at a very high level and in this demonstration what we want to show is that the user is specifying two intents two high level intents and the first one is going to be the infrastructure intent followed by the another intent that is going to be the uh, workload intent in the infra intent all the the user uh, basically all it all the user needs to specify is the properties of the the infra that uh, that he wants to create and the the example could be the zone region uh, wavelength zone for example and the and the the properties like uh, if he, if he requires a gpu in the target cluster and uh, these high level intents are then understood by the controllers uh, the infrastructure controller specifically in nephew and it will perform the job of creating this infra based on the intent that is specified similarly for the workload intent at a high level uh, only two pieces of information is uh, what is required one is the placement intent where the user can specify the region where he wants to uh, deploy the workload uh, followed by the source uh, source repo so in the previous slide we saw the catalog repo where the raw packages are present so user has to specify the source repo so that the controllers could download the uh, the packages from there perform mutations uh, and uh, upload them to the target repos via porch yeah we can go to the next slide so this slide uh, it basically shows the end to end uh, demo so as i described uh, the pink boxes on the uh, leftmost of the screen so user starts with specifying the the uh, infrastructure uh, orchestration intent and that is specified via a custom resource which is called the uh, deployment package custom resource and then this custom resource is basically reconciled by the nephew controller and nephew controller will download the kpt package which has the uh, eks related krms from the uh, private catalog repo it will perform the mutations if any uh, specified in the placement uh, specified in the infra intent and then the nephew controller is going to upload the curated package to the uh, to the infra deployment repo 
And as we know that there is config sync present in the Nephew uh, controller cluster itself. And this config sync is basically meant to sync the infrastructure related packages from the infra uh, deployment repo. And as we, uh, as the controller uh, curates and uh, up uploads the uh, curated package to the infra deployment repo, the config sync will automatically in the backend starts syncing that, uh, syncing that package. And as a result of it, what will happen is that the, the, uh, the, the app controllers from uh, AWS, they will come into action and they will start creating the resources, uh, the EK resources which will basically comprise our EKS cluster. So this is the part, uh, I mean, uh, it covers how the EKS cluster uh, uh, orchestration is uh, basically automated, but that is not enough for workload orchestration. We have to prepare these clusters for workload orchestration. And we have automated that process as well. And that is uh, the job of the uh, Nephew infra controller. So it's a POC level controller. So what it does is it watches the EKS uh, Kubernetes resource in the uh, Nephew controller cluster. And it waits for this, uh, this resource to come into ready state. And once it comes into ready state, it deploys uh, config sync in the target cluster. And it also configures the config sync to, to basically point to its corresponding uh, edge repo. So that is, the, uh, that is the minimum preparation that is required in order to, uh, prepare, uh, in order to prepare these clusters for handling uh, the workload, uh, deployment of the workload. So th this was the complete end-to-end uh, -end path of the uh, infrastructure automation. And then comes the uh, workload automation, uh, workload orchestration. So workload orchestration user specifies uh, the workload intent. And uh, so basically two, uh, two pieces of information. One is the uh, source repo where the caching DNS raw package is available. And another is the placement intent. And then this controller will basically resolve the placement intent and it will figure out that it has to uh, push this package to the edge repo, which is associated with our EKS cluster. And the, based on the kind of the edge repo, it will uh, basically configure the scaling profile in the uh, caching DNS uh, KPD packages. And the, 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 the curated packages will be uh, basically put on the edge repo. And as we know that uh, our uh, infra controller has already configured the config sync in the EKS cluster to pull these packages from the edge repo. So, as soon as the nephew controller pushes the uh, package to the edge repo, the config sync in the target cluster will basically sync that package and that will result in the uh, deployment of workload in the EKS uh, cluster. Yeah, next slide please. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing and uh, maybe Sandeep in the next five minutes or so, if you can uh, just quickly show the demo, that would be great. Sure. So let me share my screen. So is my screen visible? Uh, yes. Okay. So this is a recorded demo. So on the left uh, part of the screen, I am starting the uh, nephew controller. And on the right side of the screen, as I described, we will start with the specification of the infrastructure uh, intent. So this is how the uh, YAML looks, the infra uh, infrastructure YAML. So all it has is the, uh, the source repo for, from where it has to pull the, uh, the EKS KPT package. And it says that the package type is infra. So based on this, the controller basically differentiates between the infra and the workload uh, package. So as soon as this YAML is applied, the controller reconciles to it. And as part of it, as I described, it is pushing this curated package to the, uh, to the target repo. So we will list the packages now. 
So as we see, the highlighted package here is the one uh, is the, the, the is the one that is pushed by the controller, and it has the uh, EKS uh, KRM uh, KRM objects. So this package is in proposed state, and we are going to uh, we are going to approve it manually, and the approved packages are synced by the config sync. So with this command, we are approving this package. So as soon as we approved it in the backend, config sync would have synced this package, and that will basically start the uh, start the creation of the EKS cluster. So now we are uh, logging into AWS console, and we see that the EKS cluster has started to come up, and this EKS cluster will come up, and then the infra controller that I described will start preparing this cluster so that it will keep happening in the background. And in the meanwhile, we can go ahead and specify our workload intent as well. So this is the uh, workload intent. And workload intent at a high level has, uh, uh, for this example, it has two pieces of information. One is the uh, uh, information related to the placement, which it says is the US central one. And another is the source repo where the caching DNS uh, package is present. So, so this is, uh, so now what is the link between the placement intent that is specified and the, the, the EKS cluster that the infra controller has created. So infra controller creates cluster profiles and cluster cluster profiles are the, uh, they basically map what is this, what is specified in the infra controller to the target cluster. So this is how the cluster profile looks. It is a, it is a Kubernetes object again with kind cluster. So it, yeah. And this has, this cluster uh, profile says the scaling profile as uh, small uh, small fixed size. So this is what the, the controller will uh, read. And then based on this, the controller will basically mutate the caching DNS package and, uh, and configure the scaling profile in the package. And this, uh, this uh, cluster object also has the, the pointer to the target repo of this cluster. So based on this information, the controller will mutate the packages and push them to the to, to the target repo. And at this point, we have applied the object and this would have basically, uh, uh, the controller now would have pushed the package to the target repo. So similarly, yeah, so, yeah, so as was the case for the uh, infra, uh, infra uh, infra intent. So this package is in proposed state and we are going to approve it manually. So now this will stay in approved state and in the background, the infra controller is still preparing the EKS cluster. And once the EKS cluster comes up and it is prepared, the config sync will automatically sync this package, which is in approved state uh, from its uh, corresponding repo. And that will basically cause the workload deployment to happen in the target cluster as specified in the placement intent. So this process takes 10, 15 minutes, bringing up of the cluster and preparation. So I would just go to the end of this video. So yeah, so eventually the application uh, did come up in the target cluster. And uh, yeah, so that concludes the infrastructure orchestration followed by the workload orchestration by specifying only two intents with the help of the nephew uh, nephew controllers so yeah so that's that's about it uh, with the demo i'll stop sharing my screen so back to you amar okay thanks uh, thanks sandeep and hopefully our uh, viewers got a uh, a good idea of what Nephew is and how powerful uh, it is going to be when it comes to 
edge workload and infra orchestration in variety of uh, segments, starting with uh, retail, healthcare, V2X, manufacturing, logistics, telco, et cetera. So we'll end on our final slide of what's next. So please do get involved. If Nephew is interesting to you, please join us. You will find all the information at nephew.org and wiki.nephew.org. You can watch developer day videos to get a much deeper idea of what Nephew is. We have a resource for executives. So if there are um, managers, uh, director level people, VP level people who want to understand what Nephew is and how it can create value for them, then please use our white paper. And finally, uh, at any point in time, if your organization is looking at Nephew, feel free to request a one hour workshop uh, with us and uh, we'd be happy to walk you through Nephew in, in more detail. With that, thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you.